Hey there, we're David Marnie Wasserman. To our three children, we're mom and dad. To our five grandchildren, we are Tildy and Epa. And to most of you, we're your cousins, aunts, uncles, friends. For about 40 years, we have celebrated Christmas with the churches and the children we have served by telling a story called The Best Christmas Pageant Ever. It was written back in 1972 by Barbara Robinson. It became a bestseller and eventually a television movie. We're going to share a shorter version of the script uh, that was excerpted from the original book by a friend of ours, Meg Davidson, back in Cedar Falls, Iowa in 1978. The story is about a young girl's memories of a very unusual Christmas about her mother who is roped into directing the annual Christmas pageant at church, and mostly it's about a family who, well, let's just tell you the story. The Herdmans, Ralph, Imogene, Leroy, Claude, Ollie, and Gladys were absolutely the worst kids in the history of the world. They were just so all around awful, you could hardly believe that they were real. Six skinny, stringy haired kids, all alike except for being different sizes and having different black and blue marks where they had clonked each other. They lived over a garage at the bottom of Sproul Hill. Where other people had grass in their front yard, the Herdmans had rocks. And there was a sign in the yard that said, Beware of the cat. They did horrible things in school, like smoking cigars in the bathrooms, even the girls, and sneaking into the nurse's office to find out everybody's weight in order to blackmail the chubby kids. They were the terrors of the public school, and so it was hardly surprising when they extended their reign of terror to Sunday school and took over the Christmas pageant. Imogene was Mary, Ralph was Joseph, and little Gladys was the angel. The thing was, the Herdmans didn't know anything about the Christmas story. They knew that Christmas was Jesus' birthday, but everything else was news to them. The shepherds, the wise men, the star, the stable, the crowded inn. So Mother said she had better begin by reading the Christmas story from the Bible. Well, this was a pain in the neck to most of us because we all knew the story backward and forward and all we had to do was be told who we were supposed to be and where we were supposed to stand. Joseph and Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child... Pregnant! Well, yelled Ralph Herdman. That stirred things up a bit. All the big kids began to giggle and all the little kids wanted to know what was so funny and Mother had to hammer on the floor with a blackboard pointer. That's enough, Ralph, she said, and went on with the story. <sighs> I don't think it's very nice to say Mary was pregnant, Alice Wendelkin whispered. Alice had always played Mary before. But she was, I pointed out. In a way, though, I agreed with her. Great with child sounded better for Mary. I'm not supposed to talk about people being pregnant. Alice folded her hands in her lap and he, she pinched her lips together. I'm going to tell my mother. There wasn't much I could do about it except pinch Alice, which I did. She yelped and mother separated us and made me sit beside Imogene Herdman and sent Alice to sit in the middle of the baby angels. I wasn't crazy to sit next to Imogene. After all, I'd spent my whole life staying away from Imogene but she didn't even notice me. Not much, anyway. Hey, shut up, was all she said. I want to hear her. Well, that was a surprise. Among other things, the Herdmans were famous for never sitting still and never paying attention to anyone. Teachers, parents, their own or anybody else's, the truant officer, the police. Yet here they were, eyes glued on my mother, taking in every word. What's that? They would yell whenever they didn't understand the language. And when Mother 
And when Mother read about there being no room at the inn, Imogene's jaw dropped, and she sat up in her seat. What? She said, not even for Jesus? Well, now after all, Mother explained, nobody knew the baby was going to turn out to be Jesus. Well, you said Mary knew, Ralph said. Why didn't she tell them? I would have told them, Imogene put in. Boy, would I have told them. What was the matter with Joseph that he didn't tell them? Her pregnant and everything, she grumbled. What was that that they laid the baby in, Leroy said? That manger, is that like a bed? Why would they have a bed in the barn? That's just the point, Mother said. They didn't have a bed in the barn, so Mary and Joseph had to use whatever was there. What would you do if you had a new baby and no, baby, no bed to put the baby in? Well, well, we put Gladys in a bureau drawer, Imogene volunteered. Well, there you are, Mother said, blinking a little. You didn't have a bed for Gladys, so you had to use something else. Mary and Joseph used the manger. A manger is a large wooden feeding trough for animals. Hey, what, what were the wadded up clothes Claude wanted to know? The what? Well, you read about it. She wrapped him in wadded up clothes. Swaddling clothes, Mother sighed. Long ago, people used to wrap their babies very tightly in big pieces of material so they couldn't move around. It made the babies feel cozy and comfortable. I thought it probably just made the babies mad. Till then, I didn't know what swaddling clothes were either, and they sounded terrible. So I wasn't too surprised when Imogene got all excited about that. You, you mean they tied him up and put him in a feed box, she said. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Mother went on reading, Behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, hey, That's you, Leroy, Ralph said, and Claude and Ollie, so you'll pay attention. What does it mean, wise men? Ollie wanted to know. Were they like school teachers? No, dumbbell, Claude said. It means like President of the United States. Mother looked surprised and a little pleased. Why, that's very close, Claude, she said. Actually, they were kings. Well, it's about time, Imogene muttered. Maybe they'll tell the innkeeper what's what and get the baby out of the barn. They saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him and presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Well, well, what's that stuff, Leroy wanted to know? Precious oils, Mother said, and fragrant perfumes. Oil? Imogene hollered. What kind of a cheap king hands out oil for a present? Since none of the Herdmans had ever been to church or Sunday school or read the Bible or anything, they didn't know how things were supposed to be. Imogene, for instance, didn't know that Mary was supposed to be acted out in a certain way, sort of quiet and dreamy and out of this world. Imogene's Mary was loud and bossy. Hey, get away from the baby. She yelled at Ralph, who was Joseph, and she made the wise men keep their distance, too. The wise men only want to honor the Christ child, Mother explained for the tenth time. They don't mean to harm him, for heaven's sakes. But the wise men didn't know how things were supposed to be, either. Mother continued with the story. Now God had sent an angel to tell Mary what the child's name should be. What angel was that? Ralph wanted to know, was that Gladys? No, Mother replied. Gladys is the angel who comes to the shepherds with the news. Yeah, Gladys said. Unto you a child is born, she yelled at the shepherds. Unto me, I'm a Jean yelled back. Not them, me. I'm the one that had the baby. No, no, no. Mother sat down on a front pew. That just means that Jesus belongs to everybody. Unto all of us, a child is born. Now, she sighed, 
Let's right. start again. And okay. why didn't they tell Mary the name of the baby, to name her own baby? What did that angel do? Just walk up and say, name him Jesus? Yes, Mother said, because she was in a hurry to get finished. But Alice Wendelkin, she just had to open her mouth. I know what the angel said, Alice piped up. She said, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. I could have hit her. What? Imogene hollered. Well, he'd never get out of the first grade if he had to write all that. We have to go get ready for the pageant now. So pause the video, grab a Christmas cookie, and start it up again. We'll be right back. So, on the night of the pageant, nothing seemed very different at first. There was the usual big mess all over the place, baby angels getting poked in the eye by other baby angels' wings, and grumpy shepherds stumbling over their bathrobes. But everything settled down, and at 7.30 the pageant began. We sang two verses of Our Little Town of Bethlehem, and then we were supposed to hum some more while Mary and Joseph came in from a side door. Only, they didn't come right away. I knew something like this would happen, Alice Wendelkin whispered. They didn't come at all. We won't have any Mary and Joseph, and, and, and now what are we supposed to do? I guess we would have gone on humming until we all turned blue, but we didn't have to. Ralph and Imogene were there, all right. Only for once, they didn't come through the door, pushing each other out of the way. They just stood there for a minute, as if they weren't sure they were in the right place. Because of all the candles, I guess, and the church being full of people. They looked like the people you see on the six o'clock news. You know, refugees, sent to wait in some strange, ugly place with all their boxes and sacks around them. It suddenly occurred to me that this was just the way it must have been for the real Holy Family, stuck away in a barn by people who didn't much care what happened to them. They couldn't have been very neat and tidy either, but more like this Mary and Joseph. Imogene's veil was cockeyed as usual, and Ralph's hair stuck out all around his ears. Imogene had the baby doll, but she wasn't carrying it the way she was supposed to, cradled in her arms. She had it slung up over her shoulder, and before she put it in the manger, she thumped it twice on the back. Did you see that? Alice Wendelkin whispered. I don't think it's very nice to burp the baby Jesus. I don't know why not, I said, and I didn't. He could have been fussy or hungry like any other baby. After all, that was the whole point of Jesus, wasn't it? that he didn't come down on a cloud like something out of amazing comics, but that he was born and lived, a real person. Next came Gladys from behind the angel choir, pushing people out of the way and stepping on everyone's feet. Since Gladys was the only one in the pageant who had anything to say, she made the most of it. Hey, unto you a child is born, she hollered as if it was, for sure, the best news in the world. And all the shepherds trembled, sore afraid. Of Gladys, mainly, but it looked good. Then the boys sang, We Three Kings of Orient Are, and everybody in the audience shifted around to watch the wise men march up the aisle. What have they got? Alice whispered. I didn't know. But whatever it was, it was heavy. Leroy almost dropped it. He didn't have his frankincense jar either, and Claude and Ollie didn't have anything, although they were supposed to bring the gold and the myrrh. I knew this was going to happen, Alice said for the second time. I bet it's something awful. It was a ham. 
And right away I knew where he came from. My father was on the church mission committee. They gave away food baskets at Christmas, and this was the herdman's food basket ham. It still had the ribbon around it saying, Merry Christmas. I'll bet they stole that, Alice said. They did not. It came from their food basket. And if they want to give away their own ham, I guess they can do it. They had never before in their lives given away anything, so you had to be impressed. Leroy dropped the ham in front of the manger. It looked funny to see a ham there instead of the fancy bath salts jars we always used for the myrrh and the frankincense. And then they went and sat down in the only space that was left. While we sang, What Child Is This?, the wise men were supposed to confer among themselves and then leave by a different door, so everyone would understand that they were going home another way. But the herdmans forgot, or didn't want to, or something, because they didn't confer, and they didn't leave either. They just sat there. And there wasn't a thing anybody could do about it. They're ruining the whole thing, Alice said again. But they weren't at all. As a matter of fact, it made perfect sense for the wise men to sit down and rest. And I said so. They're supposed to have come a long way. You wouldn't expect them to just show up, hand over the ham, and leave, <laughs> would you? As for ruining the whole thing, it seemed to me that the herdmans had improved the pageant a lot just by doing what came naturally, like burping the baby, for instance, or thinking a ham would make a better present than a lot of perfumed oil. We sang all the verses of Silent Night, and when we got to Son of God Loves Pure Light, I happened to look at Imogene, and I almost dropped my hymn book. Everyone had been waiting all this time for the herdmans to do something absolutely unexpected. And sure enough, that's what happened. Imogene Herdman was crying. In the candlelight, her face was all shiny with tears, and she didn't even bother to wipe them away. She just sat there, awful old Imogene in her crookedy veil, crying and crying and crying. When Imogene had asked me what the pageant was about, I told her it was about Jesus. But that was just part of it. It was about a new baby and his mother and father who were in a lot of trouble. No money, no place to go, no doctor, nobody they knew. But Imogene, I guess, didn't see it that way. Christmas just came over her all at once, kind of like a case of chills and a fever. And so, she was crying. Well, it was the best Christmas pageant ever. Everybody said so. But nobody seemed to know why. When it was over, people stood around the lobby of the church talking about what was different. There was something special, everyone said but they couldn't put their finger on it. And this was the funny thing about it all. For years I'd thought about the wonder of Christmas and the mystery of Jesus' birth and never really understood it. But now, because of the herdmans, it didn't seem so mysterious after all. As far as I'm concerned, Mary is always going to look a lot like Imogene Herdman. Sort of nervous and bewildered, but ready to clobber anybody who laid a hand on her baby. And the wise men will forever be Leroy and his brothers bearing ham. When we came out of the church that night, it was cold and clear with crunchy snow underfoot and bright, bright stars overhead. And I thought about the angel of the Lord. Gladys, with her skinny legs and her dirty sneakers sticking out from under her robe, yelling at all of us everywhere. Hey, unto you a child is born. So there you go. That's the story of the best Christmas pageant ever. We love you and Merry Christmas. <laughs>